On July 3rd, 1969, to get to the park, you had to drive the whole Denali Highway. And when I drove that road through that magnificent landscape, I knew at once I was at home. The wolf walked right along here, came right over here, walked right down the lake shore, right to where we were sitting. And it was so stunning. Denali is, is overwhelming. And the more time you spend here, inevitably, the smaller you feel. It's like opening your arms and saying, come on, hit me with it, Denali. And often that feeling of insignificance leads you then to an emotional, creative place. Here, everything is so wild. And personally, for my music, it's so freeing and it opens up a part of you that can't usually be opened up. It's very mysterious and, and I guess if I could put it into words, I wouldn't need to put it into paint. Back before the National Park Service was founded, Congress sent painters out to paint these places and the paintings then returned to Washington, helping influence public thinking on whether or not we should protect these places. Images have a tremendous amount of power. It is the attempt to paint that brings the richest reward. Recognition of beauty grows with intimacy. You may pass a certain spot a score of times and see nothing till a day comes when you stand aghast at your former blindness. It's hard to characterize in words exactly what makes Denali so unique, which is all right with me because I'm a composer and it's easy to characterize it through music. Being out here, it creates such a expansive feeling that is a huge inspiration. Being in wilderness and being creative are intrinsically related in the brain. When you unplug and just go be in wilderness, the brain shifts to that creative play in the moment space that creates the best art. We were hiking up Primrose Ridge and we encountered this group of caribou there. And it reminded me how musical and fluid their movements tend to be. little dance-like moments in it. And as the piano is doing that, I'll have the viola come in on a long leg. It is literally, in every sense, an unending source of inspiration. It just gives me a kind of stillness, a kind of peace inside to be here. Pinks and purples and oranges and blues. I don't know when the experience that I have coming into the park today will lead to a painting, but I know that I'll remember the smell that I'm smelling right now from these trees that are all around us. And I'll remember the fact that it's getting cold as the, as the day goes along. I think we can never forget that parks are for us. Yeah. You can see the trail right through here that hares and moose have worn in over the years. We have set aside these lands because they have value unto themselves, but we're doing it for us. We're doing it to make a place where we can gather the best of the human spirit.
I was just sitting on the gravel bed and I was listening to the water and then the pen just starts flowing and I just start writing about things that I didn't even know that I was thinking about. It's like if you think about the inside of your mind as having unused rooms off in the corners, these chambers. And there are as many of these chambers as you need to write books, to paint, to find courage, all those things necessary for a good life. As an artist, you really do connect with the landscape. Many people ask the question, why do we need wilderness? I think wilderness speaks to something very deep and fundamental in our nature. When we go into the wild, when we go into a national park, something happens to us that changes us. Something happens that's important. My, my greatest hope is that people will come to places like this and they'll, they'll see their role in the world differently. People will come to a place where people are small and the landscape is large and they'll value places like this. Denali will always be inspiring as long as it is here.